I know, I know. Buono, bello. Which one should I use? When should I use them? I know. But don't worry, I've got you covered because this is what we're talking about in today's video. Ciao a tutti e bentornati o benvenuti sul mio canale. My name is Stefano and I am an Italian teacher. In today's video, we're going to look at two extremely common adjectives in Italian. Buono and bello. These two adjectives both mean good or sometimes beautiful and sometimes nice and kind and so on. So which one should you use and when? Well, we're gonna figure it out in today's video. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future lesson. You can also turn on the notification bell so you will be notified every single time a new video comes out. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about the adjective bello first. Bello means beautiful or pretty, good looking, handsome, Good. So let's break it down and let's understand the categories you would use bello in. The first category is appearance. So mostly bello is used to describe something based on their appearance, their look, and it's used both for people and objects. Let's say, for example, that I want to say something like Marco is good looking. Marco is a handsome guy. How would I say that in Italian? Well, it's very easy. Marco è un bel ragazzo. Marco è un bel ragazzo. And of course, I can also apply this to a girl and say Chiara è una bella ragazza. Chiara è una bella ragazza. Or I could say tutti gli italiani sono belli. Tutti gli italiani sono belli. But as I told you, bello can also be applied to objects. So I could also say questa casa è molto bella. Questa casa è molto bella. This house is very beautiful. But bello can also be used to describe something that is well done, well organized. For example, I could say Questo corso di italiano è molto bello. Questo corso di italiano è molto bello. Of course, I'm not referring to the look, the appearance of the course, but I'm just saying that this course, this Italian course is well done, it's well organized, it's easy to follow. So in this case, basically, bello means good, because I'm saying that this Italian course is very good. Sometimes the adjective bello can also refer to size and to say that something is a lot, it's abundant. For example, è una bella lista della spesa. È una bella lista della spesa. Here, of course, I'm not referring to the look of the shopping list, but I'm just saying that it's a long list. It's big. It's abundant. There are a lot of things in it. And also, if this is kind of a perk, it's very interesting, the adjective bello is also used to emphasize an idea. For example, I could say, eh, Questo è un bel problema. Questo è un bel problema. Here, of course, I'm not referring to the look of the problem, to its well done thing. No, of course not. I'm just saying that this is a pretty big problem. It's something that cannot be easily solved. So, questo è un bel problema. This is very, very common in Italian. We would say the adjective bello in this kind of expression quite a lot. It's, it's very common. But now, let's switch to buono. And let's try to understand when buono is used. So which categories we would use buono with. The first one is kindness. So when we want to say that someone is very kind, very nice, we would use the adjective buono. So if I say that Francesca is a good person, a kind person, a nice person, I would say Francesca è buona. Francesca è buona. So in this case, I'm referring to those traits of Francesca that make her a, a good person, a kind person. So maybe a person that helps other people, listens to other people, maybe donates money to charity and those kind of things. So this is what buono means in Italian. So to be a, a good person, to have un grande cuore, a big heart, as we would say in Italian. I can also use it with nouns and say 
è importante fare una buona azione al mese, una buona azione. È importante fare una buona azione al mese. In this case, una buona azione means a good deed. So it's important to do a good deed a month or even more than once a month. I don't know, it was just an example. Another very important use of buono is to say, to express the idea of someone being good at what they do. For example, if I say un buon dottore, un buon dottore, I'm saying a good doctor. In this case, I'm using the adjective buono because I'm referring to that person's ability of being a good doctor. So, of course, a doctor is supposed to be good at what they do. So, if we use the adjective buono with it and we say un buon dottore, we're saying just that. I can also use it with nouns and say quel ristorante è molto buono. Quel ristorante è molto buono. In this case, I'm saying that that restaurant is very good. So, of course, the restaurant is supposed to be good. It's supposed to serve very delicious dishes. So, if I say that quel ristorante è molto buono, I'm saying just that. I can also use the adjective buono to say that something is useful or it works for something. For example, I could say questo sciroppo è buono per la tosse. Questo sciroppo è buono per la tosse. In this case, I'm saying that this syrup is good for treating a cough. So it works for a cough and that's why I say that it's good for it. Questo sciroppo è buono per la tosse. Or I could say il mio nuovo cellulare è buono per fare le foto. Il mio nuovo cellulare è buono per fare le foto. Here, I'm saying that my new phone is good for taking pictures. So, it works well for taking pictures. And then, the last use of buono that I actually think it's the most common and also the most important is to say that something tastes good or it smells good. Actually, it is very common to use the adjective buono with food and beverages. For example, I could say Le tue lasagne sono molto buone. Le tue lasagne sono molto buone. And here I'm saying that your lasagne are very, very good. They taste very good. Or, for example, I could say Il vino pugliese è molto buono. Il vino pugliese è molto buono. So the wine from Puglia is very good. It tastes good. It smells good. If we go back for a second to the example of lasagne, I could also say le tue lasagne sono molto belle. But in that case, I would be referring to the appearance, the look of the lasagne, not necessarily their taste. But if I say le tue lasagne sono molto buone, I'm saying that they taste good and I want to eat them now. (laughs) As you can see though, the adjectives bello and buono change. If we put them after the name they refer to, we would treat buono and bello as two normal adjectives. But if we place them before the noun, and that happens quite a lot, their form would change. For example, in the first example, I guess, I said Marco è un bel ragazzo. I didn't say un bello ragazzo. I'm not gonna talk about this in today's video. But if you want, I wrote an article on my website on this specific topic. So I'll leave the link in the description box below. If you go to the blog article that I wrote on this video, you will also find additional information about this specific topic. So on how to change the adjectives bello and buono according to their position and the noun they precede. All right, we are done for today's video. I hope you liked it. And if you did and you want to support me, don't forget to leave a like on this video and also to subscribe to my channel. This way you won't miss any future lesson. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified every single time I upload a new video. And also, if you want to check out my website and my Italian course for beginners, you can go to teacherstefano.com. I'm going to see you in the next video. Ci vediamo nel prossimo video. Ciao!